Ladies and gentlemen, pros and schmoes, you are listening to The Come Up. This show brought to you by Rescue Dogs. Remember to adopt, don't shop. Okay, so um, <laughs> anyway, what are we going to talk about today? We're, we're going to do an Arnold Sports Festival recap. Nice. Yeah, so we don't have a guest today, but we are going to cover the weekend from the Arnold and talk about my experience competing on the Arnold Amateur Stage. Yep. And don't forget to use code advices at checkout when shopping at truenutrition.com for all of your supplement and protein needs. Advices at checkout. You can customize your own shit. Do it. Yep. Custom that shit. Ryan, what are you doing? Huh? Excuse me? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm eating a cheesecake. Oh, uh, um, what size cheesecake are you eating? I'm eating an extremely large strawberry cheesecake from Fresh Time, and it is delicious. Great. There's only 3,600 calories in the whole thing. On that note, welcome back to the Come Up Podcast. We are fresh off of Arnold Weekend, and we are ready to give you... A recap of how it all went down. I so can che- I can check this off my bucket list now. Not the not the Arnold, but <laughs> eating cheesecake on a podcast. Eating a whole cheesecake. Mm-hmm. This is one of those times I'm really happy that I'm allergic to vanilla because I don't even want that. Not even a little bit. I think you're lying because this shit is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be amazingly smelly later. Mm-hmm. So recap: people we met. Famous people. <laughs> yeah, so the very first day we were there, the very first day we were there, we ran into Sean Roden in the lobby, and I was like, hey, Haley, that's that's Sean Roden right there. Snipered him from across the fucking room and ran up and fanboyed on him, and we got mm-hmm. a pick. Yeah, super nice guy. Um, sent a pick to Vige, and he said, he's eating good now. Because <laughs> mother- those cheeks. <laughs> motherfucker's cheeks were like... <laughs> chipmunk storing nuts for the winter yeah (laughs) and it was really cool because a lot of times when you meet these bodybuilder in parentheses or quotation marks celebrities these famous bodybuilders like they don't ask you questions about yourself and sean he he did ask us about ourselves he was like oh so you guys competing this weekend or where are you guys from you know so he actually made conversation with us which was really cool yeah, for sure. We had um, a Rich Gaspari sighting in the lobby of the Drury. Sighted. Uh, he was he was eating breakfast, and I didn't feel like bothering him because he looked really intense. But we did see Rich Gaspari. I saw him like four times. Yeah. Yep. And then um, took a picture with Brian Ansley in the expo. That yep. was cool. So I've seen Brian in person a couple times, but never stood next to him. He is a short motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I towered over him. I'm only 5'11". Yeah. He's like 4'9". Yeah. No, he's actually probably like, what, 5'8", five, 5'7"? Five, I don't know. He's pretty little. Yeah. He was not that much taller than me. and I'm 5'2". Oh, shit. So maybe he's like 5'6". He did say, I see why you keep her around to you. Yep. <laughs> Breeding purposes. <laughs> and then, well, actually, probably the coolest person we met this weekend was uh, Victor Martinez. We were sitting... In uh, pre-judging, like the after the women's physique pre-judging, it was right before I went backstage. We were yeah. just kind of like killing time, sitting in the back corner, away from people. Yeah, and Victor just like plops down right beside us, and he's like, "Hey guys, how are you?" Again, just making conversation with us, asking us all about you know what we were doing at the Arnold. Um, and he actually told a really cool story. We were like um, just talking about his competitive history, and he he told us about the first time he competed. He's like, I ate chicken and broccoli for 10 weeks and I didn't look very good. And I asked somebody at the gym, like, what do I do? And they said, well, Victor, you got to eat some carbs. 
So he said, okay. So he ate some carbs and he said, also, you need to take a water pill. So Victor was like, uh, okay. So he went to the pharmacy and he's like, hey, I need water pills. And they were like, okay. And they gave him a bag of water pills. Yeah, because <laughs> back when, this was like, what, late 90s, I think? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Yeah, you could go and but, just buy fucking water pills at the yeah, pharmacy. <laughs> yes, Like sir. legitimate diazide. So he's like, then he went to the, the library because he didn't have internet and he, he looked up. Um, in a book looked up like what pill he was supposed to take couldn't figure it out so we went back to the gym he's like hey man what do I take and the guy's like obviously you take the diazide and Victor's like well, what color is it he's like I don't know blue he's like so long story short I took the blue pill I ate some fucking rice and I won my show <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's awesome he's he's like yeah I just pulled up this fucking bag of uh, rainbow colored pills of water pills <laughs> Uh, yeah. What the fuck do I do now? <laughs> he was so nice though. We're like, so how you feeling? You think you're gonna look good tomorrow? He's like, oh yeah, you know I'm ready. Even when I'm not ready, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean the dude's 47 years old, and obviously he he lost a little bit. He didn't he didn't place as well as he wanted to. I'm sure, but that dude looked fucking amazing. Yeah, he's crazy. He did. So yeah, so. Those are pretty much most of the people. We'll talk about some more people later. Let's, but Let's give a little day-by-day breakdown of what we did while we were there. Okay, so Wednesday morning, uh, we left Iowa pretty freaking early, around like 5, 5.30 a.m. Got to the Hyatt for check-ins, and Ryan weighed in at, what'd you weigh in at? I made weight, so the most I could weigh for my height, 5'11 to 6 foot, is 212, and... My body wanted to stay around like 220, 225 the whole time. The last few days, I really sunk down, fasted a lot. Um, I weighed in at 211, so I made it. Um, and I was pretty fucking diced and crispy at 211, but you could tell I was very depleted. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you made weight. Um, and then we checked into our hotel, and we went and tra- trained at Metro Fitness Worthington, which yeah. is pretty freaking sweet because Sarah Sarah Bruce and Mike Davies um, run that gym. You can hear all about that on the Rough, Rugged, and Raw podcast. Yeah. So we showed up there and met Scott McNally and got to meet Dr. Scott Stevenson for the first time ever, which mm-hmm. I was excited about. Yeah, and his girlfriend, Delane. Delane, IFBB Pro. What's her last name? I don't know. I don't remember. It's on her Instagram. <laughs> Hart. Hart. Yeah, Delane Hart. Yep. Yep, so that was cool. And we all kind of, I had to do um, chest and try that day. So Haley and I trained chest and try. And the rest of those guys, Sarah and Scott and Scott and Delane, they trained back and by, I think, or just back. Mm-hmm. But So we didn't actually train together, but we were in their train at the same time. Mm-hmm. That gym's pretty sweet. Has a cool vibe. I like the setup. I like how there's like a place to just sit down, like couches. It's not so like sterile. Yeah, like our gym. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sterile. Um, yeah, so that was fun. So we trained there. Went back to our hotel. Basically, just went to bed. And then the next morning, Thursday morning, we went and trained at Powerhouse Gym. Powerhouse Columbus. Yeah, and that was. <sighs> So Thursday, it was like before everybody was in town and this place was fucking packed, like already it was fucking packed and I'm not a crowd person, like not even fucking close. No, makes me anxious as fuck. Yeah. So we, (laughs) we got there, we checked in and the guy that does is like, okay, so it's $20 for a day pass or you can do a weekend pass for $50. By the way, the gayest guy you'll ever meet. <laughs> he was, he was he really was, nice, He though. was really cool. Oh, yeah, his nice. name was Javier. We're supposed to tell oh, yeah, Sarah supposed to Bruce <laughs> yeah. that Javier says, hey. Yeah. Fuck, forgot about that. Anyways, yep. Javier says, hey. Um, super nice, but we were like, uh, no, we definitely don't want a weekend pass. I'll train in a hotel gym before I come back here where it's so you can't even get on a machine yeah it was it was to the point where when a machine opened regardless of if you were training that specific muscle group you jumped on it and took it yeah (laughs) but we did see i mean it was decent little pump workout we got it wasn't anything great but we did see some other bodybuilders there we saw who sergi constants yeah um Lionel Bassett, IFBB Pro, was in there. Yeah, with with the people that yeah, he with, had with a DJ Anderson, who competed. He's from our uh, the Quad Cities here locally. He competed in Class F 
men's physique at the Arnold Amateur, and I think he finished eighth. Yeah. Um, so good job, DJ. Yeah. Um, who else did we see? We saw the little Asian dude who won the Arnold Amateur last year in men's physique. I can't remember his name, but he was in their training, and he, the big, and he competed this year. The big black dude that said hey when we were leaving. Uh, Mike Rashid was in there. Yeah. Yeah. There Charmin Narman. Uh, yeah. Narman um, Ashiro um, was there. Laura Lee. Laura Lee Chapados. Yeah. There's just a bunch of people. But um, more than more than that, it was packed. But I mean, it was a, it was a cool gym just, you know, for for what it is. And oh, and actually, Breon was there, there too. Breon was there too, but we didn't yeah. talk to him. And it was within walking distance. So at least we've been there. We got a shirt. But um, if I ever go to an Arnold again, which we plan to, I won't I won't go back. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time, if we get there on Wednesday, we'll go to Powerhouse on Wednesday. Yeah. And then we'll go to Metro, we'll go to Metro Fitness Worthington every other time. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the next day, f- no, same day, Thursday. So after we trained, we pretty much had the day to hang out. Ryan needed to relax, and then we went to, I went to meet the pros. Um, and Ryan had to go get his tan by Liquid Sunrays, which was a little bit uh, like a mile away from the hotel. So he went there, and I was at Meet the Pros uh, doing interviews for HD Physiques and NPC got, News Online. I got a story about the tan thing. Yeah, so at, at Meet the Pros, I, I got to talk to some competitors. Um, I, I didn't know this, but only a few of the divisions are invited to Meet the Pros, which was kind of sad to me being a women's physique competitor. So only the figure and bikini girls are invited to Meet the Pros, and then only the open bodybuilders. Well, that's because um, women's physique, you guys are all nasty. Yeah. Yeah, you're disgusting. Yep. But I go interview them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. Write, in, write into somebody about that. but um, <laughs> <laughs> Write a strongly worded letter. Yeah, but I, I was able to interview some people that I've wanted to interview for a while now. Uh, Melissa Bumstead, she was super sweet. Uh, she said fuck in the interview, and it was the funniest thing because she has this, like, sweet Canadian accent. She's like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Am I allowed to say that? And I was like, no, you can't, but it's fine. Whatever. I like, I like how you're like, oh, don't worry, they'll edit it out. And she's yeah. like, oh, okay. And then, <laughs> and then they said they posted it on NPC News Online. And yeah. she's like, fuck, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> It'll give her some edge. She just yeah. seems she's so nice. Anyways. Now you're a bad bitch, yeah. Melissa. Yeah. So uh, some other Sarah Kovach, a fitness competitor, interviewed her. Bojana Vasilovic interviewed her. She's a sweetheart. Um, Missy Farrell. Uh, who else started? Laura Lee Chapados. Yeah, I think that's about all that I interviewed. Um, Christine Moyer, who was also there interviewing, had some other people so where on camera people, with her. Where can people watch those interviews? Um, I believe YouTube. Uh, Joe posted them on Facebook as well. So if you're friends with me on Facebook um, or Joe, Joe Bear, HG Physiques, NPC News Online, you can find those interviews there. Um, I tried to put in some different questions this time to the competitors. Like most of the time it's all, you know, how are you feeling? What are you hoping to bring to this stage? You know, what was your feedback? What did you do to improve on it? Blah, blah, blah. But I asked like, you know, like what's your favorite movie? <laughs> or what's something about you that we don't know? And <laughs> I got some some interesting answers to that. Um <laughs> I think that the competitors were a little thrown off because nobody wants to know about... I want to know about that stuff. Who did you interview? You told me somebody had a story about feet. Yeah, that was Laura Lee. Oh, tell, tell that story. Um, she was so she was so nice. So she told me that English is not her first language. She's French-Canadian, so... But you, you could hardly tell. But I asked her, like, what's something that nobody knows about you? And she's like, is it okay if it's weird? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's fine. So apparently... Um, at the end of the day, like when she showers and washes her feet, she has to go right to bed. Like if she goes anywhere else in her house, she has to wash her feet again, which I thought was interesting. Cause I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not that hygienic. There you, there you go. <laughs> All you foot schmoes out there yeah. better slide into Laura Lee's DM. Cause you know, they're going to be clean. Sorry, Laura Lee. Don't mean to <laughs> call you out like that. Sorry in advance. <laughs> yeah. So meet the pros was cool though. Um, there's lines for, I mean, Rolly Winkler had the longest line. It was just crazy. Everybody wanted to talk to him. Didn't you say Rolly and two other, Bonnick and somebody else had their own room? Yeah. So those two, and then I think it was Janet 
Leu or however you say her last name, the the bikini competitor that ended up winning the bikini division, wow. uh, and then one other person. But they had like a whole room, and it's just so funny because the open bodybuilders. Like if you ever go to one of these meet the athletes things, <laughs> the if women's physique is invited, that basically you just like sit at your desk and hope that somebody knows who you are, <laughs> and then all the bikini girls and the open bodybuilders have like lines hell along trying to talk to them and men's physique. Yeah, it's like all the, all the fuck boys love meeting their men's physique yeah. idols. This is where Instagram followers absolutely translate to real life. You, the more Instagram followers you have, the more freaking people are gonna want to talk to you at Meet the Pros. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> so yeah, if I yeah. ever do one of those, I guess we'll be born. <laughs> so I got a story about when I was going to get tanned too. So it was about a six minute drive where I had to get tanned at this place called the Vault vault from uh liquid sunrays and Haley was at meet the pros and i didn't want to drive because parking is a pain in the ass yeah and so i i ubered and i had to be there at eight o'clock i go down at 7 30 to get my uber and it's like oh he'll be here in five minutes so i'm like okay cool i'm waiting um i see the car like pulling up on the little uber map and it can't find me i'm like oh shit okay and now at this point it's like 7 45 I message the guy. He doesn't get back to me. It's like 750. I'm like, fuck, dude. And then finally he calls me at like 755 saying, oh, the GPS on the Uber thing isn't showing me where you're at. I'm like, I'm at the entrance of the Drury Hotel. Come pick my ass up. So he picked me up and got me there at like right at eight o'clock, which was nice. But here I am fucking by myself. Haley's busy. <laughs> I don't have a vehicle. And my cortisol is like spiking, thinking I'm not going to get to my tan on time and shit. So just little things, but that's those are things that people don't think about when you're like at a show competing. Like you need to stay calm and all that. And then to top it off, it was not supposed to snow. And when I walk out of getting my tan on, it's fucking snowing. And I have to walk outside, get another Uber. So I'm standing out there like trying not to get wet and ruin my tan and shit. So that didn't help. And then this little Indian dude picked me up and took me home <laughs> <laughs> to the hotel, not to his home. Yeah. The actually one thing that bothers me about most competitors is everyone's late. So you probably were more the norm at that point because it's just, and that's annoying. That annoys the fuck out of me. Everybody's yeah. on their own schedule. Yep. It's, but that that's that's a topic for another day. Be on fucking time. <laughs> so moving on uh, to Friday. We open the day up. Ryan has to go get his second coat of tan. So I take him there. We come back to the hotel. He starts, you know, he had breakfast, whatever. I got to carve up on waffles and syrup and eggs. Yeah. So thanks, Veach. Yeah, and then we went to uh, Women's Physique pre-judging. And that was fun. Yep, that was awesome. Um, Natalia Quelho walks out on stage and looked absolutely fucking diced. Yeah. She looked sure. really good. Um. She's not my favorite women's physique competitor, but... I hope I'm your favorite. Well, yeah, you haven't even competed yet. <laughs> so I'm but not. I see... I don't know. She does really well, and I can see why, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't love her physique, personally. Yeah. You know, but her legs are strided like no other, and yeah. her front relaxed is amazing. Yeah. Other than that, like, she doesn't have big arms. She doesn't have big legs. She does, I don't know, but Not she does well. Dense. She's she's legit. She's obviously fucking good. She's, yeah. like, top couple in the world Absolutely. for a reason. Her shape is pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sharonica Hinton. Yeah, she looked great. She looked really good. Brittany Watts. She was really good. Mm -hmm. um, Did So who got second then? Sharonica. No, Sharonica got third. It was that... Uh, Oh, yeah. The Korean um, gal or whatever. Uh, Peng Brahai. Yeah. However you say her last name. Yeah. And then, yeah, the first call out was interesting because mm -hmm. um, Natalia, if that's like what we're basing everyone off of, I didn't think the rest of the, the top five, top six looked like her. You know, they were a little more uh, thick waisted, less shapely. Um, and not, not even quite as conditioned as Natalia was. I mean, Sharonica looked, looked the closest. Well, Brittany Watts has that more petite lean look also. And then, uh, shit, what's that other girl's name? She was like the other skinny, not skinny, but like thin, did small frame black girl. Margita, how did she end up finishing? Zamalova. I don't know. Yeah. 
But I thought Peng Brahai looked better at the Olympia. Ashley Fuller is the other girl I'm thinking of. She's kind of waspy looking, um, but she's got a petite frame on her. Kind of almost like a figure girl with, mm-hmm. you know, deeper lines and bigger I mean, arms. That's the point. She looked great. That's the point, though. Yeah. I, cause, so look at Ms. Olympia. Um, Shanique Grant. She transitioned from figure. And she, I mean, that's, so did Natalia. It's it's the shape with just a little more muscle added on top of it. Mm-hmm. You know, that. Yeah. And Valentina Machina made first call. Mm-hmm. She was she was in the mix. She's mm-hmm. always She's always going to be a front runner. I don't think that I usually would ever pick her to like be the winner, but you know she's going to be in the mix. Yeah. yeah. Lauren Rutan, uh, first guest on our show, she looked great. Really, really good. Crisp. She's dense as fuck. Yep. Um, we, Ryan and I both love her look. She looks so good. Uh, not what they were going for. Uh, they went definitely for more like the Natalia because Lauren and Natalia are apples and oranges. Yeah. And I'm a little, I don't want to say I'm confused by the judge's decision because but here I'll I'll break it down because here's the thing with Lauren Rutan is you either love her physique or you're really not going to like it because she's very dense, very hard. Um she just has an interesting look about her. So you either love it or you hate it. And for her to she got what a second call out. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay, I would have had her like maybe top like 4, 5 or 6 or at the bottom. You right. know, so it's like right. What are we It's going just kind of yeah, what are we going for? But I don't know. She still looked great and had a good placing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think part of it is they're trying, they are trying to control women's physique a little bit more. And part of it too, I was actually talking to Lauren's husband a little bit when we met up at the bar afterwards and we kind of discussed that maybe she's so short. She's what? 4'11". Yeah. She she makes me feel fucking tall and I'm 5'2". So maybe Lauren's height has a something to do with it i think it does and she just puts on an immense amount of muscle yeah because you can look fucking amazing but if you're four foot eleven standing next to a five foot even like a five foot four girl right and you have a similar physique you're just gonna look so like small right and i I don't i don't know right oh totally um which we'll talk more about that with my class in a little bit (laughs) yeah yeah so after women's physique pre-judging uh the men started so yeah, right. go ahead. Talk about your your portion of the competition. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the backstage experience. Um, this show, the Arnold Amateur, was fucking sweet. Um, they really make you feel like a pro, and the show was ran very smoothly. So shout out to Mike Davies. Thanks. You guys put on Bob Lorimer. Lorimer, all you guys put on a great show. We were, side note, we were actually able to meet Mike Davies, too. Yeah. He's such a cool guy. I was impressed because he he remembered that I I I want him to put on like a coaching clinic for coaches, you know. And we kind of had a conversation about that, um, just with like how a lot of young male coaches are. Like, why do they think that they can fuck all of their clients? <laughs> and, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you guys are married. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's the secret, you know. You just you have to fuck your spouse. Yeah, I know it's it's kind of a weird concept nowadays, right. but fuck the one you put a ring on. <laughs> yeah, so weird. But anyways, he said he's probably going to put on a coaching clinic, so that's exciting. That'd be really cool. So anyway, the backstage experience, um, it really makes you feel like a pro. It was cool. Uh, you walk back, and there's like long hallways in the back. It's dark, and the floor is lined with like rope lights, kind of like on an airplane. Um, so it shows you exactly where you're supposed to go. Um, and then there's a dressing room with a bunch of mirrors in there where you hang out, you know, when you're just chilling at the beginning and then they move you down to the oiling room where they lube you up, put your oil on and, uh, there's bathrooms interesting. in the back there. <laughs> oh, it's funny too about the oil room. So like all the little oil up girls are like, they're, they're kind of cute. Right. And there's this, there's this one girl. And it was my turn to go, and I stepped up and made eye contact with her, and I go, lube me up. <laughs> and she just kind of smirked at me and was like, okay. <laughs> she, I, I expect nothing less. <laughs> yeah, so I got a little chuckle out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after you get oiled up, you go down to the pump-up room. And usually, at a, you know, every amateur show I've ever, I've only been in one other amateur show, but I've... <laughs> but you've been backstage. Yeah, you I've been backstage and several several amateur shows and everybody's 
fucking jammed into one little room, pumping up with bands or doing push-ups or mm-hmm. like pushing against the wall, trying to get a pump. They actually had weights back there. They had a rack of dumbbells. They had a flat press. They had a shoulder press. Um, every, everything you needed. Sweet. I mean, it was awesome. And, of course, you could still use your band and shit, but there's mirrors everywhere, so you had an idea of what you looked like. Um, and then they get you in your, your line, and you go out and get ready to go on stage. So Scott, Scott McNally did a, a live feed from oh, yeah. backstage. Yeah. And it was so funny because the only, I mean, people like notice the competitors, obviously, but the expediter that was lining you guys up, people are like, why the fuck is she so angry? Like, and it was early in the day, so yeah. she needed a fucking chill pill. Well, yeah, she was going fucking nuts, but here's <laughs> here's the thing, like, I oh, get it, I dude, get it. Dudes are stupid and they don't fucking listen. <laughs> yeah, I get it, because, okay, here's, I don't know, I'm kind of about respect and shit, you know, so, and being on time. Like, she called my number, and I was up there within 10 seconds, and she's calling everybody else's number, and they're in the back finger banging their buttholes or whatever, I don't know. Or they don't speak English, is part, well, is part, part of, of what international show I, is. I would say 80%, this is just, I could be completely off, but I'm just guessing. I would say 75 to 80% of the competitors, especially in the classic physique division, were foreign. Mm-hmm. They were foreigners. Um, there's a lot of Middle Eastern people there. There's a lot of Canadians. A lot of Mexican, South American, and a lot of UK and um, French people, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, anyway, they lined us up on stage, or to go on stage, and right behind me is the guy who won it last year, uh, Justin Huey from Canada. He trains with, like, uh, Cody Droba. I think he trains with Ian Vellier and um, Reagan Grimes and all those guys. Um, so, he won his class last year, but fell short in the overall, so he was still an amateur. Um, yeah, he looked really good. So he's right next to me on stage in my first little little group to come out. And then right next to him is David Colo. I think that's how you say his last name. He's a dude from France, uh, kind of light-skinned black dude with some crazy little Afro hair. And uh, he had a great physique on him. His abs were crazy. Um, and ultimately, David ended up winning the show. But uh, Something that really <laughs> bugs me. I don't know if it bugs me, but he didn't even understand um, the rules of, of what to do when you get on stage. So everybody in the audience, like even the guys up there couldn't tell until after everything was done. But um, the guy that ended up winning, he everybody's in a front relaxed pose, like waiting on, on Steve or whoever, Gary or whoever was Gary, moving you Gary guys around. Gary Udit was doing it. And this, this guy is doing a front double while you're supposed to be in a front relaxed pose. Yeah, when I was on stage, <laughs> I didn't realize that David dude... The French guy was doing that, but I'm like, man, they're really holding us in this front relax for a <laughs> yeah, while. Like but it's because the guy is not in it. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched the playback later, and this motherfucker is up. We're all in front relax. He's up there hitting front doubles and like classic shots. We're like, motherfucker. <laughs> how, uh, the thing that I don't get is how did you end up winning this show? Right. Yes. You, you okay? Maybe you had the best physique, but here's the thing: you got to follow the rules. Yeah. Play. Play. It's still a game. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's like playing in the NFL, not wearing your helmet. Yeah. Somebody's got to stop you. Yeah. Um, but so the other weird thing is, so I was in Class C, Classic Physique. And, you know, almost every other show, they keep, like, for me, I'm usually Class C, but it's five foot ten to six foot, And I'm 5'11 and a half, and I max out my class and with weight. Um, so I'm usually, like, the tallest in Class C. This show, Class C, was 5'11 and above. So I'm the shortest one up there. And there was like other two other guys that were like probably under six foot, but everybody else I was going I was going up against some guys that were like six five, six six. And for every inch you get an extra amount of weight. So for me the most I could weigh in at was two twelve. Now granted I was two twenty five or two twenty seven, something like that on stage. I carved up a lot. I was pretty full. I was still one of the honestly like the bigger, denser guys on stage, even against some of the like six two guys. Um, but yeah, you know, if somebody's six, four, they can weigh, I think like 242 pounds, like the American Oak, Casey Wilson. Um, he's got a good following. Some of you guys probably know who he is. So like that giant motherfucker was in my class. Um, super nice guy, by the way, got to meet him. Um, but yeah, so like the, the class height, that's the one thing that was kind of, kind of weird that I wasn't a fan of. How many people are in your class? There was 26 in my class. Yeah, I think. 
I think I, I don't know. There's, it's just so different. Like the first two classes make sense, but breaking that last class into two would also like the six one and above, like a five and eleven to six one, and then a six one and taller. I think I think they should just do like a national show where they do class A, class B, class C, class D, class E. Yeah. You know, and there they, you go. Yeah. I mean, it does make it harder though. So for an international yeah. show, I get it. I I understand. But. Yeah, and they're t- it's time sensitive, so they got to crunch people in. <laughs> yeah. But that's really my only complaint. Um, and here's the thing: if you're really that good, you're gonna it doesn't height doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna be better than them. So the, I get it. At the pro level, it doesn't. There's matter. no height. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> also. Um, so yeah, I was on stage with like the top one and two guys from last year, and the first my first appearance on stage, they're right next to me, um, and I, I held my own with them, I think. Um, but then they did the first call out, and I wasn't part of it. And I'm like fuck, and then um, so they brought nine guys out in the first call, and then they took um, maybe like four or five off stage. So that was your top four or five there, and you ended up, and then. And then, so I guess the guys that were remaining up there were the second call, yeah, right? Yep. And then they brought me out, put me in the center. So I guess you would call this third call out. Some might call it second, but I call it third. Um, put me in the center. I stayed in the center. And results came out today. And ultimately, I finished 10th place. Which um, is pretty good, considering it's your second show and first national level show. Yeah. I mean, this is an international show. Yeah. But pro qualifier. There was only one American who plays top five, and that was Chris Papasavas, I think. He uh, owns a company called Iron Classics. Pretty sure he trains out of Bev's gym Mm -hmm. in New York. That dude, honestly, if you ask me, that dude had the best overall complete physique on the stage, and I would have had him win, even Mm -hmm. though he was smaller. Yeah, so what? uh, tell everybody what your next plan is here. What are you doing next? Yeah, so now... Other than eating, like, shit for the last couple days. Well, here's the thing. (laughs) Honestly, I didn't until yesterday. So, like, Friday and Saturday, I did not even eat like an asshole. We didn't have time. No, because I was working. Yeah, so we were busy. Um, So, Sunday, I ate like a complete fucking asshole. And today, (laughs) I am having this cheesecake that I bought and didn't finish yet. But um, So, I'm having that, and then I'm getting back on diet. But... (laughs) If if you're listening, Beach. Yeah. The plan is now... um, I'm going to go do the St. Louis show, NPC Midwest event. Um, it's the day after the St. Louis Pro where Haley will be making her pro debut. And, yeah, so I'm going to s- suck myself back down to make weight at 212 for Classic. And there may even be another surprise where, because I know I can fill out to about 225 and still look pretty good. So I might even cross over and do heavyweight bodybuilding. I think you should. I think that I think that might I'm going to. I'm trying to make it like a <laughs> fake surprise. That's Gosh, damn it. not a good plan. But anyway, we're, we got 45 days. So. so yeah, I'm going to cross over and do both. Sweet. Um, yeah, good plan. So we got to re-qualify and then hopefully hit some more national shows. Yeah, and then year. after that, I'll probably, if I do get top two and qualify for nationals, because I let my national qualification lapse um, last year, um, I'll probably do junior Nats first in Chicago. And if I get first call out or, I mean, hopefully win it and get a fucking pro card, that'd be cool. But who knows? Um, but if I get first call out and not a pro card, I'll just try to keep hitting uh, pro qualifiers for the year. Mm-hmm. As long as I keep getting first call outs. True. Otherwise, time for an off season. Because fucking, like, this uh, pro qualifiers are so such interesting shows, these national level shows, because... The freaks all like the freaks around the world come out for this Arnold Classic, but fucking Junior Nationals, everybody goes to Junior Nats. The freaks mm-hmm. are fucking out to kill at Junior Nationals. Yeah, well, and I I also feel pretty good about my placing at the Arnold Amateur because there was one American, mm-hmm. I think only one that placed ahead of me. Right, and and even if there was more they're taller than me by a few inches so they would not be in my class at nationals right um so yeah, yeah I th- national I th- level shows. yeah at national <laughs> level shows pro qualifiers so i think i have sorry chicago nationals <laughs> um yeah so i think i have a decent chance so we'll see for sure so after after all that was over we went to the fucking expo which ryan and i had never been to the arnold expo and holy fuck blow my brains out um (laughs) i mean it was it was cool for sure but there's so many fucking people 
Um, it's like we, we went to the Olympia last year and that expo was like pretty big and pretty frustrating, but this is like a million times bigger and frustrating. I think you could fit at least four Olympia expos inside of the Arnold one. At least. Probably more. At least. Maybe it's 10. crazy, but. Maybe a hundred. Yeah. So we did, we mm. went around, we tried some, some protein bars, whatever, got some. All the got freebies. Y'all got stuff. some free, y'all got some free proteins. Yeah. I'm trying, daddy trying to get but some proteins. Then, y'all got some leggings for daddy. Okay, stop. Okay. <laughs> and then we went to the Blackstone Labs booth and saw our guy. Russo! Joe Russo, Rudog, shout out to you, man. Uh, hooked us up. I feel, I felt bad for jumping the line, but Joe didn't give a fuck. So. Dude, that was so great. I didn't realize the line, <laughs> the line at Blackstone Labs was that long. So... We they so the Blackstone Labs um, booth has like a spin the wheel like the Price is Right, and and like if you land on a certain thing you get a certain prize whatever, <laughs> and this so we we walk up we see Rue Dog, who speaks in third person a lot which is funny, <laughs> and it's your boy Rue. <laughs> anyway, we see him and he's like, hey, come here, guys, and so we just cut in front of this line. Yeah. Yeah. And we we could tell it was long, but we had no idea how long it was yet. <laughs> it was really okay. Long. And so he we talked to Joe, get a picture, and he hooks us up with some shaker bottles and some shirts or whatever. We introduce him to our friends John and Andrea, who we'll talk about here in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um and then we're like, Okay, peace out, dude. And we walk around this booth in the line. There had to be 400, 500 people in this I line. Know, I know. And they're just waiting. I they're know. like, you fucking assholes. I know. <laughs> so. but anyways, yeah, it was cool to see him. Uh, then we're walking around a little bit. Saw one of my friends, uh, Instagram friends, now friend in real life, Ashlyn Richardson. She real won, life. She won the overall at um, uh, USA's. USA's last so year in women's physique. Miss USA Women's Physique 2018. Yeah. yeah, so I got to meet her. You know, we all have those like supportive friends that we have on social media and then you meet in person and it's even cooler yep um yeah so shout out to her got to meet her um yeah and then we were like let's get the fuck out of the expo um and then just what else did we do friday night friday um i think that's about it is that when we is that when we went out to that fucking restaurant no okay oh yeah that's saturday so then saturday morning um Speaking of our friends, John and Andrea, they are actually our transformation um, challenge winners, our Arnold Classic transformation yeah. challenge winners. And I've, I've talked about the Arnold Classic transformation challenge that Haley and I put on um, on a couple other podcasts um, like Cerebral Entertainment and maybe an advice is one one time. Um, but when I decided that I was going to do the Arnold class, the Arnold Amateur Um, I was like, well, fuck, let's make a transformation challenge out of it for some of our clients. And so we did like a basically treated our clients like it was a bodybuilding prep and they had 16 weeks to transform their bodies. And Andrea ended up winning. She started at like what one upper 150s, something like that. Mm, She's five. She's five, three. I think she was like 159 and she ended up at like 132 at the end. Yeah, I and, mean it was a crazy transformation, yeah. and not even not even the weight, like her waist, yeah. her waistline. Well, she lost what like six inches off her waist, like it, four it, off each leg. Yeah, it was just six unreal. off her hips. Yeah, Some crazy shit. Um, we were able to do just so many so many cool things with them. Yeah, you know, just health wise, like getting um, menstrual cycle in check, learning how to prep food better, you know, sleeping better, just a healthy lifestyle in general. Yeah. They're addicted now, too. They really are. Well, and and her fiancé, John, um, I went to intermediate school and high school with him, so I've known him a while. Um, And he ended up taking second. He lost, like, fucking 30 pounds. Yeah. Um, Just amazing. And he wants to keep on leaning out for a while and then start building up before their wedding a little bit. Yeah, so they're getting married here in September, and I think we've actually... Um, turned Andre on into trying to become a compete a bikini competitor. Yeah, so, girl, stick that crotch out to yeah. the judges. <laughs> so mm, blow a kiss. They, so yeah, they they enjoyed the weekend. They said it was really motivating for them, and that I mean that's what that's what it's supposed to be. One of the coolest things was for them, you know, to see to see the stage and the the pro athletes on the stage, but 
for them to see what it's like to interact with with athletes like that you know because mm-hmm. i think the general public a lot of times they think like we're all vain and and arrogant and stuck up and uh, th- okay don't get me wrong there's a lot of fucking people that are like that um but there's also a lot of bodybuilders that are the nicest people you're ever gonna meet will yeah. go out of their way to say hi and and do things for you so that was cool for them to see you know such a just a positive place for them to be at and they they were really motivated by it so it was really cool for them to be there yeah i'm glad they could make it oh so i I guess i gotta add too from the arnold classic transformation challenge the the top two winners received three days from us um paid tickets to the expo Mm -hmm. right so they got to go to the expo um, for winning the challenge and then andrea was the first place winner so she got a photo shoot with HD Physiques, Joe mm-hmm. Bear. So shout out to Joe. Thanks again for doing that. Um, they did like a 45 minute photo shoot at the Hyatt mm-hmm. across from the convention center. Um, Joe- and Andrea really enjoyed that, I guess. And yeah. They got some good shots, I guess. Definitely shout out to Joe for that. Not only is he just a freaking kick ass photographer, but, you know, he took the time to really take care of our clients. And that means a lot to me because, you know, just as some competitors can be real assholes, some photographers can be re- real assholes too. And Joe is not one of them. He's yeah. one of the most professional people that I've worked with. And I highly, highly recommend Joe Bear HD Physiques. Yep. He's one, I know for like from the husband, boyfriend side. Um, it can be uncomfortable sending your wife or girlfriend to a photo shoot sometimes. Like, you don't know, is this guy a fucking weirdo or oh, what, yeah. whatever. And even even me being in this and being a pro and, yeah. and someone that's not afraid to speak my mind, you always go yeah. with me. Yeah. But Joe, um, I would feel comfortable sending Haley fucking on a week trip with Joe to go do photo shoots right. or whatever. No, um, he's, he's awesome. Great guy. He's, I mean... Not only does Haley work for him a lot, but he's he's legitimately our friend. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a good one. So super cool, and, and he he made Andrea feel just amazing. Yeah, which and was I, the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, Joe, if you could set aside like fifteen to thirty minutes for this, it like it doesn't have to be anything special. Just get some good photos for her. You know, like this is the best shape she's ever been in in her entire life. Mm-hmm. Hook a brother up and hook her up. Mm-hmm. So and he's like, yeah, no problem. And they shot for like an hour. So yeah, super cool. He's there. Joe is there to make money. He has photo shoots planned, and mm-hmm. he took time out of his day to go and do that for free for us. Mm-hmm. So thanks. It was it was cool too because uh, right before Joe shot with Andrea, yes. he he had Bojana Vasilovic in oh, front no of his lens. Um, I mean, Bojana is. Uh, She's top. She's an elite figure competitor. Multiple time figure um, Olympian. Yeah. So, and I was holding some lighting for them, whatever. And Andrea comes up, and you know he treats Andrea with the same respect and gives her the same attention that he gave Bojana. So that just speaks to the quality of his character. So make sure you give HD Physiques a follow. Uh, I do a lot of work for them. Just highly recommend the company. Yep. So then after the photo shoot, Ryan and I hustled over to the Advices Radio meetup, which and was fucking nerds. cool. Yes, this was uh, the meetup and live studio on its audience podcast. Other than competing this weekend, um, this meetup and podcast was probably my next highlight. It was yeah, awesome. I, would, I would say so, too. So the panel was cool. I mean, we were the least cool people on the panel. By far. But... <laughs> Excuse me, but so Scott Scott McNally and VJ were our host, and then um, Carl Lenore was there, yeah. which that guy is so fucking cool. He's like literally the godfather of podcasting. Yeah, it's amazing. So he has superhuman radio, and he just like a voice that sounds like butter. Like he's he's awesome. Yep, super smart. He knows a lot of fucking yeah. info on yes. arms and peptides. Yeah. And- Anything, Anti-aging. Anything health. Yeah, so then next to Carl was uh, Sarah Bruce. Shout out to Sarah Bruce from Rough Rugged and Raw podcast. Uh, Dave Kalick, who is just a freaking cool dude. Yeah, I had a lot of, and at pre-judging, uh, men's open pre-judging, I had a lot of fun time like just hanging out, talking to Dave about, mm-hmm. you know, he invited us out to California to go to Gold's and have mm-hmm. sushi and talked about Slayer. Yeah. So he, he coaches some really high-level uh, men's bodybuilders like uh, Adam Young, Dorian Haywood. Um, I know he's got a couple more, but just a cool guy. He gave me a compliment on my on my physique, and I, I was 
Yeah. I I probably blushed a lot. Yeah. You gave me one too, so I was like, wow. I guess you could say we're getting to become a pretty big deal. <laughs> so yeah, Dave was there and then um Austin Stout was there from uh he has several podcasts, but he's a coach as well. And uh, That guy's got a lot of knowledge. He does. Absolutely yeah. does. And he had on a cat fanny pack. Yeah. A cat pack. And a and a pretty glorious beard. Yeah. So if you have a fanny pack and a beard, like I'd hit it. <laughs> uh Dr. Scott Stevenson. More than a wealth of knowledge. Yep. Not gonna lie. So when we when we were at the <laughs> when we were at the Olympia, I saw Dr. Scott from we were it was at the uh, press conference. Yeah. I saw him across the fucking arena. I was like, "There's Dr. Scott." I hadn't I hadn't met him yet. You out see of, the Mohawk? Yeah, he's out there. Of, out of everybody at the Olympia, like athletes and all that shit, I wanted to meet Dr. Scott the most, and I did. Fuck yeah! And then I tried to hold it together when we met him at <laughs> Metro Fitness, and then the podcast. I'm like, "Oh yeah." Good just, thing. Good thing we're depleted. I'm just gonna try to play this cool. Um, I think I did. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> then Skip Hill, uh, yeah. such a cool guy. The motherfucker's funny. He's awesome. I I love him on Blood, Sweat, and Gear. And he's just the thing that I really love about Skip is that he's just like fucking doesn't give a shit. No, <laughs> no. Well, he literally <laughs> gave a lot of shit he from, did. <laughs> because he ate so many best bar best bar ever's that are very high in fiber. Once a fucking again, thank God I'm allergic to vanilla yep. because he was eating these like fruit and vanilla nut bars. They look so fucking good, but the way that he was shitting, mine would have been even worse. So thank thank God. Well, also shout out to Michael Clay, uh, best bar ever for putting on the advices uh, meetup because. And just to hear more from him about how they started that company and him hand rolling bars in his kitchen and Scott and Veej really trying to work with him at the very beginning was super cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, Skip is, Skip's like, he just has that like attitude about him, like no nonsense, but still like funny. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. And very knowledgeable. Super. So, mm -hmm. um, I do got to say that Melanitan's working, brother. <laughs> Um, I call Actually, you. I call you brother. Because, John and yeah. John and Andrea were they thought like, you were black. We thought he was black. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's Melantan. And then we had to go into what Melantan is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, yep. other people. We had a bunch of people in the audience. Um, I was able to meet some people again, like um, pe like listeners. So shout out to Johanna, Mary, Brittany, Paul, and Keith Allen. Hadn't met any of you in person, but. Super cool to get pics with you guys and talk to you a little bit about what you're doing and your bodybuilding. So, hey to y'all. Thanks for coming. Yep, that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how funny was it when Carl Lenore was talking about, um, what was what was their original show? Not Superhuman Radio, but the other one. Um, fuck. Anyway, his original podcast. They off, were, topic. off topic. Off topic. They were, it was a bodybuilding podcast, but they were more like kind of what we do you know but they were fuck more, around they were more vulgar but <laughs> no, he, he said they were the Carl, howard, they yeah. were the howard stern of yeah. bodybuilding right and so he's like i had iris kyle on the show and uh well you'll you'll hear more about this but he's like i didn't want to know about her training i wanted to know if she liked anal sex or dating <laughs> or, or dating white guys and then apologizes if there's any children yeah. in the room so that shit was <laughs> fucking hilarious yeah um another really cool part Speaking was of, um, do you, Haley, do you like anal sex <laughs> another anyways back just to, kidding she's currently asexual <laughs> i'm dieting motherfucker Eat. <laughs> so josh wade walked into yeah. our podcast i got so excited yeah so scott apparently scott knew this whole he's like oh yeah i talked to all max yesterday like i knew they were coming um so josh wade walks in and vj's like josh wade josh wade ifb pro everybody josh wade just walked in which was fucking awesome because he had a lot of really cool stuff to add Add to. He's looking fucking huge. Mm -hmm. He's doing New York Pro. Is that his? Uh, yeah, New York. I think that's what he said. Cool. So that's really cool. Yeah, and the other IFBB pros in the audience: Amy Landry, my friend, and uh, Scott's bikini athlete. She was there. Yep. So that was really cool too. And yeah, then we went and watched prejudging. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, we went to prejudging. I don't remember watching uh, classic prejudging. No, not the Arnold classic oh, prejudging. <laughs> okay, gotcha. not, not classic. I'm, I'm looking at Haley's notepad here, and it says classic prejudging. I'm As like, in, I didn't watch fucking classic. <laughs> yeah, pre -judging. you dumb fuck. We went to the Arnold classic prejudging. Yeah, 
Classic. Okay, Arnold Classic. Wait, hold open. on. We went to the wheelchair prejudging and finals yeah. first. You know what? Yeah, let's talk about that. That was really fucking cool. Yeah, it was. Um, King Kong, mm-hmm. the giant black dude in the wheelchair. He ended up winning it. Yeah, um, but Chris Dim. Chris Dim. That was amazing to see. Hell yeah. I mean, former Olympian, couple time Olympian. Yeah. Got in a really bad car accident. Mm-hmm. Um, and he made a comeback after ten years or so of being yeah. off stage. In a in a wheelchair, um, that was amazing, and the dude's fucking arms are still Crazy, insane. Crazy, yeah. Um, but to hear they talked to him a little bit, you know, even though he got second, they talked to him a little bit on stage when the show was over, um, and just for him to say like <laughs> how hard it was for him, but you know he's gonna come back and he's he's gonna do better than ever. It's they are they're really inspiring athletes for sure. And then the the Arnold Classic guest poser um oh man i just started following her i can't yeah. remember her name she jenny first, jenny something first female yeah wheelchair she bodybuilder was, yeah she was in a wheelchair out there um they brought her out to pose with all the all the guys and yeah. that was pretty cool to watch yeah yeah and then then they went right into the arnold classic prejudging yep um we're later we're going to talk about like our th- overall thoughts on the placings and all that shit but Let's get our first impressions out there. Mm-hmm. Fucking who stood out to me? Obviously, Brandon Curry. Mm-hmm. That dude walked out, and we're like, damn. Yeah. Luke Sando. Whoa. Holy shit. That is the. That made me fucking happy. I don't even know Luke personally, and I was like, holy fuck, I'm happy for no, that guy. No, he's just cool, though. Yeah, he came out, and he was crispy as could be, mm-hmm. big, lean, conditioned as fuck. Mm-hmm. He looked awesome. He looked like a statue. I think he's cute, too. Yeah. <laughs> I like his gauges in his <laughs> ear. Yeah. Uh, um, you know who kind of disappointed me? Rolly? Rolly Winkler. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I, I think everybody at the podcast chose Rolly as their, uh, before anybody saw any of the competitors, we chose we all chose Rolly as the winner. Yeah, and then he was smooth and as fuck. He, I mean, he was big as fuck, of course. So, did you see he made a post about having knee surgery or no. something after the Olympia? He did. Oh. Um, Still, that doesn't mean you can't diet. I think it was in the Geared Up, uh, I saw it. But Mm. he, yeah, so I didn't even read all of it because I don't fucking care. Because excuses or whatever. He had to get on stage. The Um, dude, regardless, the dude's amazing. But he came in smooth. He was soft. Yeah. Um, uh, Raphael. Raphael Brandau. Dude. (laughs) That guy reminded me of like a a taller um, Rich Gaspari from back in the day. His legs are huge and crispy. He looked he looked like a statue himself. Yeah, he looked great. Like I personally, I would have probably gone my top three after seeing prejudging. I would have gone Brandon Curry, Luke Sando, then Rafael Brando. Yeah. Even though he's not that big. Yeah. But that doesn't matter. To no, me. no. And I th- he was proportionate and conditioned. And Cedric, Cedric, Cedric was awesome. Yeah. Could have been a little more he conditioned. Absolutely could have. But he was he was awesome. A lot of people are saying it's a gift where he placed. I don't. I don't get that. I don't know. I mean, maybe. <clears throat> I guess we weren't there for finals, but in prejudging, I thought he looked great. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Josh looked really fucking big. Josh Lenardowitz. He was really big, um, massive. He looked. He looked really good. He was conditioned. Um, I don't know. It's like just maybe his shape a little bit. Like he made Rolly look small in some yeah, poses. Yeah. Yep. Um, but a, a tiny bit more conditioning, maybe. Yeah. And because I thought Josh would probably get third or fourth. Yeah. And S- Steve Kuklo looked great. Steve Kuklo is one of those guys who will always be in the hunt. Like, like uh, he's on usually like the borderline of first and second call out, yeah. and that's where he ended up. Yeah. He looked great. I would just really like. Him. Wasn't gonna win it, but he's a he's a bad dude. Yeah. Yep. So then <laughs> we went into bikini prejudging. What do you think of bikini? It's really inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bikini listeners. I know we rag on you a lot. <laughs> the, but. Um, no, but, but, okay, comes with the fucking territory. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, but the thing with bikini to us is like, how the fuck do you judge that? A lot of times it's just so hard. I think that it would be so hard to judge that category. Yeah. Here's my breakdown of the bikini. You guys, <laughs> you all looked great. You all looked cute and you were beautiful. And great job. Good job. <laughs> Um, one thing that was interesting to me, though, was uh, speaking of Laura Lee, how I interviewed her. Her look was was different than the Olympia. 
um, not maybe just not quite as full in the glutes, and she looked really thin through the waistline. But um, Janet, Janet ended up winning, and she's she's gorgeous. Um, the the more of the fuller, um, you know, not as hard physique is what I think they're really going for with bikini now to make that difference between bikini and figure. So mm-hmm. yeah. Your girl Frida, she she finished a little further down. Yeah, Frida Paulson is one of my favorite bikini girls. <laughs> yeah, I, I like her. And from, why is that? Well, she's smoking hot blonde. Her ass. Chick. <laughs> but she she does have the best bikini ass, I think. Nice diamond, but um, and she's she's a little harder for a bikini girl, mm-hmm. and I kind of like that. But um, from the from the knee up, that girl's a winner. She looks fucking great. Yeah, it's but like if, her like joints. her yeah her joints from the knee down to her ankle are like a little thicker which mm-hmm. i mean you can't do anything about no. that and that's and i think she knows that yeah but um yeah no she looked great too i like her uh christine interviewed her at meet the pros and she's she's super nice super nice girl yep so she's always going to be in the mix too but i think because of like the knee down she i don't know that she'll ever be like arnold champ or mm-hmm. olympia champ um ashley Kaltwasser was up there too yeah, first call yeah and i think that she she is not quite as hard as she was at the olympia too so i think she listened to that feedback because she gets she gets pretty fucking hard mm-hmm. for a bikini girl um yeah so then men's physique was up yeah, men's physique prejudging i was really excited to see sadiq yeah i didn't give a fuck about men's <laughs> about uh men's physique but i did want to see sadiq um, he's big yeah, he's a big dude. <laughs> he added a lot. And we actually talked to Kenny Wallach about that, too. Yeah. Kenny Wallach, world's best posing coach, in our opinion. Yep. Um, shout out to Kenny. He helped me a lot for this show, too. And actually, we're planning on having him on on a future episode. Yep. So with keep Scott. an eye out. Yeah, and Scott McNally will be tag teaming with that one. Um, but Kenny was like, man, Sadiq um, put on so much muscle that I had from going up to Classic that I had to reinvent all of his posing because what he used to do in men's physique posing does not work anymore because his shape is different. He's got so much more mass. Um, so that was interesting talking to Kenny about that. Um, but yeah, yeah lucky Libra, he, that dude was, was fucking diced. So diced. So you could tell Andre the day Ferguson. before he posted a selfie in his fucking face. He was like black Skeletor. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Raymond looked awesome. Yep. That guy's just fucking big. Um, yep. George Brown, George Brown, he's good, a Columbus guy. He looked really good. So that's cool for the hometown yep. guy to get um, top five. Logan Franklin, right? Is yep, the name? token white dude. He was huge. Yeah. Yep. So And then who uh, there was the other dude up there. Kieran Kieran something. I'd never heard of him. Yeah, I don't I don't know him. But he looked good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so anyways, after that, what do we do? Oh, we went um, I think I did some cardio and then we got ready and went to dinner. Yeah. Um for anybody that goes to the Arnold. Make sure you fucking make reservations. <laughs> Fuck yes. If you plan on on going to eat within 15 minutes of the convention center. First timers. Make a reservation. We went to like <laughs> three different restaurants within walking distance that were a little bit nicer. And honestly, we ended up exactly where we should have been. So yeah. we ended up at this. Well, first of all, we went into one place. They're like, that's going to be a three hour wait. So I was like, all right, fuck this. Let's walk down the street. We went to this other bougie looking place. I yeah. walk in. How many is it? Okay, four of us. So oh, we're on a little bit of a wait. The bar is open. And okay, I don't drink, so I don't give a fuck. So I was like, how long of a wait do you have? It's it's fucking five. She goes, oh, we should have a table open for you around 930. <laughs> we're like, Bitch. Oh, fuck you, you <laughs> dumb millennial cunt. <laughs> so, so anyways, I was like, yeah, we're leaving. Um, we went to this place called Bernard's Tavern. It was open fucking seating. There was a dirty ass table. I got somebody to bust it. The f- Or bust it. <laughs> <laughs> Bus uh, it. I just picture and, like a bus boy uh, coming over and elbowing the fuck out of the table. I thought you were going to go sexual with that. Um, mm. But uh, it only takes me 30 seconds. <laughs> somebody bust our table. Um, <laughs> and the music was loud. Everybody was a little bit more rowdy in there. There were no suits. Um, so, yeah, we fit right in. I had a chicken salad. It was it was great. Yeah. I don't know if you people have gathered this or not by now, but Haley and I grew up in bars. And we're, <laughs> and we're blue collar as fuck. So, that, yeah. that fit. Yeah. Um, I don't eat perfectly. small plate, motherfucker. Yeah. That's not what I do. Bitch, you call this salmon? I wanted 16 ounces of salmon, not this right. little three ounce morsel. Right, what the fuck? Anyway, that bar was awesome. Yep. Um, Bernard's Tavern, is that what it was? Yep. Or restaurant, whatever. And Tavern. I had a pepper jack stuffed cheeseburger. That's called a Juicy Lucy. Yes. Juicy Lucy. I like latex Lucy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> she's juicy oh, as fuck. Now we're talking about porn. Everybody go to Pornhub. <laughs> 
and <laughs> look at juice or juicy Lucy. Latex, yeah, yeah, look at juicy Lucy. Latex Lucy. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I had a cheese stuffed juicy Lucy burger and it was delicious. Um, yeah, yeah. And John and Andrea were with, were with us there too. Mm-hmm. Our our challenge winners. And My friends. salad was actually really good too. I'm starting to really love My salad. salad. Ryan, can we go get a salad from Fresh Time? <laughs> can we get a salad? <laughs> Is this blue cheese? I'm gonna put this on my salad. Is that what I sound like to you? No, you're a little, you're, <laughs> you're a little raspier. <laughs> Fuck. Um, yeah. So, anyways, then we left dinner, uh, went back to the hotel, and tickets were fucking sold out. I wasn't about to scalp a ticket, um, so we went back to our hotel and streamed finals. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed, like, but not really. But I was a little disappointed because it was our first time at the Arnold Classic. I wanted to, when you go to the shit, you want to go to finals. It's fun. Like everybody gets a little bit dressed up unless you're VJ, you just wear a flannel, <laughs> but everybody gets, he had jeans on. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. <laughs> it was cool. And he had, it was technically, it was a button up, right? It was just a flannel, yep. which I'm wearing one right now. Yep. But, um, you know, it's fun to go to that. Everybody gets dressed up. The atmosphere is awesome and you get to witness history in a sense, but it's also nice to stream it from your fucking laptop because you can sit back and in your underwear and fart <laughs> and we had a pizza we had our friend Caden. we didn't have pizza you ate a pizza yeah my bad we had <laughs> my friend Caden who came down from the quad cities here and he also couldn't get a ticket uh, he came down with a bunch of his friends and so he's like hey what are you guys doing um mind if i join you yeah i'm like yeah come on so we were hanging out in our room and there's commentary with yeah, the show yeah you know on online so that was cool yeah um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you still, you get to see it even better from the internet than you do in, in person. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, yeah, that's Saturday. So Sunday morning. Let's, yeah. let's talk about the placings quick. Oh, okay. From, yeah, let's talk, let's talk about the placings from the finals. Okay. So let's start with. Club the classic. Yeah. So Brandon. Men's Open classic. Yeah. Brandon Curry. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? Are you interviewing me now? Yeah. Um, Brandon looked great. I was more excited. I'm not interviewing you. I'm interrogating you. Okay. Fucking awesome. Um, I was really excited. Just, I mean, it's so cool that Brandon fucking listens to Advices Radio. First yeah. of all, yeah. he's amazing. And to see what he's done um, at Oxygen Gym, and he j- just seems like such a laid back, cool fucking guy. And I think he really deserved it. Mm-hmm. He looked amazing. I got to throw this out there. So a few (laughs) months ago, we were hanging out with some very reputable and notable um, people in the bodybuilding industry. And we were talking about who the winner would be for the Arnold Classic and maybe the 2019 Olympia. And I threw Brandon Curry out there. I'm like, if that dude can put it all together, he could be up there. And they kind of scoffed at it. And I'm like, who are we hanging out with? It's not important. (laughs) And um, I'm like, fuck i don't know we'll see and here we are he won the arnold classic this year and if he keeps it like this like sean roden better fucking bring it he better he better nail it like last year otherwise brandon could get him for sure do you think that uh well i think both of us agree that we would have had luke second yeah i I would have put luke ahead of i mean william bonnick is fucking amazing he's like he's the last year's winner yeah he's such a a ball of muscle he's dense he's aesthetic he's He's, VJ, he's, a, he's a shorter Kai Green. VJ calls him a Brahma bull. Well, fuck, that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm I'm more all about like the aesthetics and definitely. And shit. I just like. I mean, especially I, when there's an Arnold statue standing behind you. Yeah, I would have put Luke Sando second. Yeah, I might get some flack for that, but I would have. Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, so William got second, Luke got third, right? Yep. Cedric got fourth, and then fifth was Steve. Or how did that go? I think I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. Um, Raphael was up there though too, right? Uh, no, Raphael didn't <laughs> place as well. I would have had Raphael higher, but the thing is, he's so much smaller than right, these guys. Right. One thing. One thing about um, Raphael too, I thought was cool. The real technician, Chris Acido, posted him um, on show day, and he said, "In 364 days, Raphael Brandau can win the Arnold Classic." <laughs> so he, he can. Yeah, he really could, so, especially under Chris's watch. So here was the top top six. It was Brandon Curry, oh. number two, William Bonac, number three, Luke Sando, four, Cedric McMillan, five was Roly, yeah, and then six, Steve Kuklo. Right, Roly. I mean, yeah, he, he Roly was fair. a fifth place for him is fair. 
I would I would have honestly put him a little lower, but right. when a guy is that big, I, how do you do that? You can't put him too much lower. Well, I disagree. You got to nail it. Yeah, true. Because all those motherfuckers are big. You're right. You're yeah. right. You hear that, guys? If you're married, <laughs> just say you're right. <laughs> Eat your cheesecake, fat ass. Um, <laughs> There's only 3,600 calories in this cheesecake. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. So, uh, what's about, uh, let's talk about, like, figure and fitness a yeah. little bit. So, After all, we do try to focus on the women's side, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're pissing me off. <laughs> I got to pull up the placings. Uh, t- so, figure, Sid. Sid Ms. Olympia. Sid Gillen. Go. She looks great. Um she even she made a post about how she improved on her physique from the olympia actually um brought in a little bit of a tighter physique which you know she did uh, i thought she was a little smooth last year at the mm -hmm. olympia even so with um candace lewis not competing anymore um and latoria who who knows if she's going to come back but not being at the olympia last year because of health reasons uh nadia nadia wyatt was able to step into that like uh that trinity of black girls that just rule figure for real nadia um, is unreal she's so unreal and such and a sweetheart so sweet. shout out to nadia she's a friend now uh just such a cool girl and her physique is unfucking real her proportions are nuts that v taper into the tiny ass waist and her just legs crazy are, are so deep and crispy crazy so i mean if anybody's challenging sydney it's absolutely nadia Mm-hmm. Um, but then, so, okay, for one and two, we obviously knew that that was going to happen, but, uh, third place, Jessica Reyes Padilla. That's pretty interesting, right? That is interesting, she, which she looked really good, but I did not think that she was going to get a top five. Me neither. Especially if that aesthetic is what we're going for. Yeah. She's almost borderline. She could almost borderline do physique. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, she could. She wasn't quite as hard as she normally is. Yeah. Um, so maybe that helped her a little bit. Natalia Soltero, which is, uh, somebody I I don't know a ton about, but she does have the little bit smaller waist. Mm -hmm. Um, and she looked, she looked good. Not overly hard. Um, Boyana placed fifth, uh, you know. She's always going to be up there. She is. And then, um, Sandra Gajales placed sixth. They really, judges really like her too. They do. She has a a pretty look. she brought her. I feel like she brought her waist in a little bit. I think she did too. She That's absolutely what she needed to do. Um, yeah. So yeah, men's and then, classic. Men's classic. Yep. George. Yep. George Patterson with the win. Isn't it Peterson? Oh fuck! It's Peterson. Know. Yeah. Third. <laughs> George DeBull. I just know George DeBull. Yeah. Um. Yeah. George Peterson. He won it. Which dude's a fucking freak. His mm-hmm. back, his legs, everything. Mm-hmm. I think he should go to two twelve. Mm-hmm. Um. But why do that when you keep fucking placing top three at the Olympia and then, you know, you just won the Arnold, ride it while you fucking can until they say you're too big, dude. Right. Um, but Steve Lorius. Fucking unreal. He finished second, right? Yep. That dude is the epitome of classic physique. Absolutely. If you ask me, okay, so Brian Buchanan from back in the day is one of my all-time favorite physiques. Mm-hmm. Crazy bicep peaks, tiniest waist I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Just overall aesthetics. Yeah. And great look. He, yeah. Steve Lorius is almost Brian Buchanan. Give him a couple more years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Courage Opara placing third. I don't know a lot about Courage, but I, I'm, I know he was at the Olympia last year. Yep. Um, I'm pretty certain anyway. I remember that. Um, he looked great. He's Fucking little crazy legs. compact, like aesthetic package. Yep. And then um, Keon. Keon. The that guy dude. who is allegedly natural. Um, and I... I kind of believe that he is, um, he was, which is unreal. Right, and he's he's always like 22 years old, too, Yeah, and he's flat as fuck. Yeah, well, that's why Arnold. that's why he could maybe be natural, I think, because yeah. he was a little smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually thought that he would be in the top three somewhere, but so he barely missed it. But um, and, Keon, and they t- they tested his blood, right. and his his test ranges were within the normal range, supposedly. So interesting. I don't know the fifth and sixth guy. Not, Cal- that, not that it matters. That's part of the game. I'm it, just it saying. I don't is. give a fuck. <laughs> Khaled Chikawi. I don't know. I don't know who that is. He was fifth, Sorry. and then Ricky Moten was sixth. Um, yeah. Yep. So then fitness was interesting, though. So Whitney Jones, the reigning Ms. Olympia fitness, was actually overthrown by Rial Graber. Um, she was the Olympia runner-up, right? Rial. Uh, yeah, I believe so. I don't know for sure, though. Okay. Uh, but... 
pretty crazy because Whitney, Whitney's so good. She's she's moved up. She has amazing um, routines. But I looked at the the two piece round from Fitness. Rael looks good as fuck. Her really? her her figure round was absolutely what did it for her. Yeah, she's beautiful. Her waist is tiny, you know. And and Whitney doesn't. I mean, she looked great in the figure round too. But I think that that's definitely what it did it for her. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are we missing anything? We we talked about bikini already. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So first Arnold experience was great. We had fun, busy as fuck, but also awesome. I, the setup of everything too, like Columbus, just seems like such a cool city to me. I wouldn't mind visiting more yeah. than just for the Arnold. Yep. So Sunday, we got up. I got up, and I had some coffee. Talked to Joe. Woke you up finally from your pizza coma. Yep. And uh, we got on the road. Yeah. And, and it's supposed to take how long to get home? It's supposed to take like six under half, seven hours. Six and a half to seven hours. It took us like eight hours. Well, because <laughs> we were going through a fucking snowstorm, <laughs> there wasn't really accumulation on the roads. But when, you know, the cars are constantly driving through the lanes, it kind of piles up on that center lane, like on the, on the dotted line. So when you go to change lanes, you fucking slide out of control. When mm-hmm. there's a slow motherfucker in front of you. You can't. You got to be very careful passing, and we had to be very careful. So that's what took so long. Tons of accidents too. Oh shit! It was we crazy. counted like twenty cars but, in the ditch. But once we got GPS, took us like a weird way though too. But once we got just north of like Peoria, we were fine. So yeah. And I wasn't even mad because we listened to um, the Joe Rogan podcast with Alex Jones. That was five fucking hours. Yeah, so that really helped the drive. <laughs> it, by. it really that was did. awesome. Yeah, well, really first did. we listened to the Ron ba- Ron Burgundy podcast. Yes, we did. Ron Burgundy podcast. Yeah, okay. yeah, so we listened That's to that, <laughs> and then we and then we listened to Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, which yeah, I'm a huge fan of both. Shout out to Alex Jones out there. Yeah, I know you're listening to this show, you motherfucker. <laughs> and you, shout out you, to Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah, Alex Jones, you are the one that woke me up to the world. So thank you. Joe Rogan's one of my crushes. Fucking weird. I get it though. I get it. He's cool. He's cool. He's a comedian. He's got a podcast. He's a fucking bald. world champion kickboxer. Yeah, I don't know if it was kickboxing, but he was. He's a he's no Muay Thai. A bad, Muay Thai. He's actually a bad dude. People are like, oh, the guy from Fear Factor? Yeah. Uh, the UFC commentator? That guy's I a fag. Him. No. Joe Rogan's a bad motherfucker. He is. And he takes more growth hormone than you, probably, and he will <laughs> fuck you up. Um. So how many pounds are you up today? Um. So in three days, <laughs> I've gained thirty, at least 30 pounds. And I'm down to word to your mother. Yeah. So <laughs> so last Wednesday, I was 2, 211, and... Last night when I went to bed, I was 242, so... I'm sitting at 143. Goal is, by my next check-in, to be at 140. Yeah, that'd be good. I can do it. That'd be good. You're on track, but prep starts today <laughs> for me. Well, I guess, okay, starting tomorrow prep morning. starts tonight. Tonight. <laughs> tonight. Anyways, for another episode of The Come Up. What? Hold on. Don't do that yet. I have to say thank you to VJ Peary. The bodybuilding nerd for um, getting me through this prep. Um, probably couldn't do it without you, and that was awesome. And thanks to Kenny Wallach for all the posing help. Thanks to Scott McNally for putting together the advices being our meetup. Um, thanks to all the social media people who you know reached out during the prep and right before showtime and all that. Um, I know I'm going to miss people, but. Um, thanks to Haley sitting across from me for putting up with me <laughs> and yes. So yeah. yeah, now you can sign us out. Thanks everybody. Well, for another episode of the come up and for Haley and Ryan and all the cheesecake left on the table. Mm. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>